Meat Boy is back. Today we are making bone broth, definitely one of the most popular drinks over the past few years with the carnivore keto paleo diet crazes. And bone broth is viewed as this end all be all health food. Reality is it wouldn't make my top 10 list of nutrient dense foods. That being said, you know, bone broth is delicious. You can get some collagen, some bioavailable amino acids in your diet. And if you are having gut health issues, consuming bone broth as opposed to other foods, you know, that are much more stressful on digestion can definitely help you heal your gut. But there are some downsides to bone broth. You know, it is a high histamine food. It is a very cooked food. It's heated for a long period of time. So it can stress your body's enzymes. Definitely pros and cons. If you guys want to learn more about bone broth, check out my video that I made about a year ago. Today, the focus is how to make it. So let's take a look at the ingredients. Classically, bone broth is simply bones and salt. You'll see a lot of people add apple cider vinegar, but I think if you're consuming bone broth, part of it is for enjoyment. So you do want to add the classic stock seasonings here. You know, we have the mirepoix, you know, organic carrot, onion, celery. We have some organic thyme, bay leaves, super classic, pretty much any French stock recipe. These are the base ingredients. Uh, my little secret is I add kelp, uh, AKA kombu. This has a very high mineral content, potassium, magnesium, calcium, iodine. This adds an incredible amount of nutrition to the bone broth. Not only that, kombu has the umami flavor. So really makes it super complex, super tasty. I add this to any gravy, any stock, uh, makes it amazing. Uh, so the bones you get are really the most important thing. You know, there's a lot of like collagenous, gelatinous tissue on these bones that will break down as we cook it. Uh, on Frankie's Free Range Meat, we do have tendons uh, that we are actually sold out of right now. So if you can get your hands on some beef tendons, those are super great for adding gelatin to your stock. Uh, some people think that apple cider vinegar like breaks down the minerals in the bones, but it doesn't. The main purpose of apple cider vinegar is for flavor. The acidity really cuts through the fattiness of the bone broth. Maybe the acidity helps break down, you know, the collagen a little bit. You know, unless you're literally submerging bones in only vinegar, water with a little bit of vinegar isn't acidic enough. So, and even if, you know, this could break down the minerals in the bones, the chelations, calcium carbonate in bone isn't really that bioavailable to digestion. Uh, so keep in mind, you're not getting calcium. You know, most of the electrolytes in this broth are actually going to come from the seaweed and the seasonings. Uh, we're going to use the tallow to sear the vegetables. But first things first, you have to put your oven on the hottest heat possible because we want to get these bones nice and brown for flavor. So my ovens go up to 550. We're gonna let these heat up while we prepare the vegetables. What I like doing is keeping half of the vegetables raw and then I caramelize the other half. So I'm compounding and layering flavors in the stock. By all means, you could just throw these in raw. So what I like to do is peel the carrots, peel the onions, and I wipe the celery with a rag because you know peeling celery is, is really irritating. Uh, usually I'll run it under cold water as well. Uh, just to, you know, rinse off any potential, you know, cross contamination, whatever it is. I mean, this is going to be boiled for 10 hours. You know, all the bacteria, all that stuff is going to be killed. And if there were any, you know, agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, you know, you're not going to get those off the product by, you know, rinsing it with water. So, you know, the only reason to really, you know, rinse your produce is to get the dirt off of it or, you know, potentially any microbes that got on it while it was handled in the supermarket itself. I got a little carrot peeling trick for you guys. So you take a Y peeler, you hold it like this, you take the carrot and you just go like this. By far the quickest way to peel any vegetable. You can't do it with a lot of vegetables because they require, you know, the long shape, but this makes peeling carrots a breeze. You can't exactly do this with like an onion or an apple. But even like a stalk of celery, you know, you want to peel it. You know, it's not, it, it's pretty quick. It's not that bad. All the vegan boys and girls can thank me in the chat. Now you guys can peel your vegetables quicker. For the vegetables that we're going to brown and saute to develop that caramelization and color, you want to get them, you know, fairly small. Don't go too crazy, you know, with the dice. Uh, and then for the ones that are raw, you know, you can just keep them whole 
and throw them in when we're ready to do the broth. I'm not crying, you're crying. <sighs> These onions are killing me. So in the pot, I'm just gonna put some beef tallow, courtesy of Frankie's Free Range Meat. And the onions are gonna go in here. So traditionally, a mirepoix is two parts onion to one part celery, one part carrot. And that's the ratio we have. And the carrots. So this is gonna go on a high heat so we can start caramelizing these vegetables. Ovens are preheated, so I'm gonna put the bones in. One on the top, one on the bottom. So what we're getting here is some browning on the bottom of the pan. That's the flavor. We wanna definitely scrape that up. And you could even pour some water or some apple cider vinegar in here, you know, to make sure it doesn't burn. So I've been deglazing the pot with some apple cider vinegar here. I've added about maybe three quarters of a cup so far. Uh, just making sure we're not burning the bottom. You know, as you can see, you know, we've built up some nice brown fond on all of the vegetables. So the bones look like they're browning on top, but we definitely wanna flip these over and get browning on both sides. And I would say this is gonna take about 30, 40 minutes total in a very hot oven. But you definitely wanna flip these and be careful with these because if you don't get adequate browning on these bones, this is literally where all the flavor is coming from. See, we got a lot of dark browning. Put some water in there. Scrape up all that flavor. And this is pretty much good to go. We're just gonna wait on the bones. It looks like the bones are done. Nice color on top. All right, so the bones are just gonna go in the pot. Now this looks like this isn't gonna fit in one pot. So we'll take half of the cooked vegetables from this pot and we'll put it in this one. Don't worry about being exact if you do this because we're gonna combine the broths at the end anyway. What you wanna do is take the sheet tray and scrape all of that fat and flavor into the broth. Now we add the raw vegetables. Now for the seasonings, I'm gonna do a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in each of these. You could always add more after it's cooked. Do a couple sheets of kelp in each one. And these look a little full, but as they start reducing and simmering, it's all gonna go down. I'm gonna do two bay leaves in each pot, a sprinkle of thyme. Here I have some reverse osmosis water from my sink. Uh, by all means, you know, don't feel bad if you wanna use some glass bottled mineral water for this. You're spending all this money on ingredients, you might as well spend some money on water too. So the heat is on medium. I'm gonna bring these up to a light simmer and then we're gonna lower the heat all the way, let them go for a couple hours, it's gonna reduce, and we'll probably add a little bit more water Total cooking time for this, you know, 12 to 15 hours. So the bone broth has been going for about six hours. As you can see, everything has, you know, gotten a bit darker, kind of less life to it, less vibrant. It's reduced a little bit. And, you know, if you take a look at this, there's like a couple bubbles coming up here and there. That's exactly what we want. You want to keep this as low and slow as possible. So uh, we're going to let this go for another six hours and then it should be done. It has been a long day of simmering, 12 hours to be precise. So now we're gonna strain out our bone broth. You know, at the 12 hour point, all the flavor has been extracted from the vegetables and the bones and any further cooking is only gonna add like a burnt flavor. If you wanna reinforce this further, you know, strain it, then reduce it or even add fresh vegetables and meat. As you guys can see, there's quite a thick layer of fat on top. I would say it's about an inch. So, you know, we're gonna scoop underneath that to take the broth out. When you let this cool off in the fridge, this layer of fat on top is gonna solidify, then you can take it off. What's also going to happen is the broth itself will become gelatinous if you had enough collagen and enough of that gelatinous tissue in, 
in the bones. That's why I suggest using the beef tendons or you can reduce this even further. This is the main difference between store-bought bone broth and something you make yourself. The store-bought broth is never going to have fat like this because if they left the fat in the broth, you know, it would oxidize and go bad. The animal stores nutrients in the fat. If you don't have fat, you don't have fat soluble vitamins. You might have some water soluble vitamins, some protein, some amino acids, but you don't have the nutrient density. So I'm gonna take a spoonful because this is still very hot. Guys, if you've only had store-bought bone broth, you really are missing out here. Man, that is so good. If you guys try this, you're gonna be drinking this for every single meal for like the next two weeks until you get sick of it or run out of ingredients. I was actually gonna auction this off on Frankie's Here Range Meat because I know how good this recipe is, but I think I'm gonna save it for myself. Uh, hopefully in the future when we're bigger, we're able to do stuff like this for you guys. In the meantime, you have the recipe, you know the ingredients, definitely give it a shot. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, of course hit that bell icon, and above all guys, please share the video. If you guys wanna support me further, keep an eye out on Frankie's syringe meat for the tendons. We do have marrow bones in stock right now. You can go to organsupplements.com if you don't like organs, if you think they are icky. Check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients and minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, as well as frank-stefano.com for a free carnivore diet meal plan. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.